Have you ever wondered why? When? How much? What if? Well, you're in luck, because you're listening to the Hypotheticast. Three best buds. On a mission. To ask all the questions. And get all the answers. I don't care what your preacher says. I got my own vicious ways. Only got one command and it goes. I'm killing it. I'm killing it. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Thank goodness we made it. Thank goodness. This is the hypothetic ass. Sure is. Yes, it is. And My name is David. My name is Emily. My name is Mike. Oh, so Ooh. coy. <laughs> yes, this playful so energy coy. is absolutely Ooh. what I'm here for. Oh, boy. Welcome. We're going to not play a game this time. We're going to have a conversation. Yeah, like Ask adults. some questions. Poke around and figure out some some mysteries Ooh. i don't know you can, you can cut that last part we're gonna ponder together mm. the topic is the afterlife <gasps> a little bit in celebration of the brilliant mike sure show that just ended the good place mm, so good, good place all about what happens after you die yeah um such a good show so many interesting things in it to ponder so that's what we're gonna do right now i want to know what we would do if we created an afterlife, what it would look like, what kind of rules it would have, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, rules. Um, but to to get to get a little warmed up, I want to know what your favorite fictional afterlives are. Mm. In all of fiction. In all of. In all of it. That's so much. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of fiction. Dante's Inferno. You think so? Mm -hmm. Remember how they made that into a video game? Yeah, dog. (laughs) There were like execution moves and stuff. Oh my God. That was the weirdest choice that anyone's ever made. Yeah, I missed that. No, it's okay. You didn't play Dante's Inferno, the video game for the Xbox 360? I I just love that we've gotten to a place as a culture (laughs) where we're mining like thousands Uh, of years old epic poems for like stupid like third rate playstation video hey, games please. second rate you take that back. oh my gosh i'm sorry you think dante's inferno though no i just want joke? i just liked saying it you just wanted to say the word i meant dan brown's inferno <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> the only real inferno I, the only afterlife for me is dan brown books maybe. just yeah. that exist like that universe <laughs> yeah <laughs> tom hanks running around yeah. i do want tom hanks to be in my afterlife i'll tell you that right now what one for me that I is kind of like a weird thing to think is my favorite is What Dreams May Come, starring Robin Williams. I've never seen that. David, movie. I was gonna say. Are that. you serious? Oh my yeah. gosh, you guys what? are meant Screw to be. You. Wow, I was like, there's no way Mike will do this one. No, <laughs> so that's one of my favorites. No, I love that one. It's so interesting looking. Can you guys give me like a two sentence summary? Yeah, Mike, take uh, over. Go cu- for it. Cuba Gooding Jr. is there. <laughs> That's really the main, All right, you have one the main left. thing about why and it's And there's awesome. lots of paint. Yeah, it's very hmm. abstract and surreal in a way that I think the afterlife could feel legitimately. Mm-hmm. Like being dead feels like I have no idea what it is because we don't know what it's like to not be alive. Mm-hmm. So to have it not be represented very physically is super cool. And I like it. Or at least have it be like a dream. I think that makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. to me. I don't really know what my answer would be to that. I feel like I haven't actually consumed a lot of books, movies, shows where they explore the afterlife. But I do. (laughs) I think there's something appealing about that trope of I feel like it's in a lot of like one frame comics where they're like standing on a cloud and there's the per- literal <laughs> yeah, pearly gate like the yeah. far side yep. something Classic. about the idea that just the f- the ground is cloud <laughs> yeah that you're walking on the Which clouds that are just nice. like right up there yeah like in the yeah. atmosphere of uh-huh. earth that's where heaven is yeah yeah we that is kind of because we're alive i'll use this opportunity to um sneak a recommendation in <gasps> for a book called nift the lean by michael shea um, last name S H E A, and it's spelled N I F F T. And Niphtaline is like it's. This is a fantasy novel, but a very like not falling in the f- standard fantasy tropes. Like the mm-hmm. major story, he's kind of like a 
a selfish like rogue person and it's about him and his buddy and they go through this very exotic vision of hell i think just to get oh. some treasure or something okay like honestly yeah, don't yeah, remember don't the plot it's very much but it's a very like beautifully described version of like hell where it's just huh. like crazy demon creatures and it just seems like a lot of fun mm. very dangerous yeah um, but it's a, it's a great book that and not, not enough people have read so <laughs> Check Thank out you. Niftaline at your local used science fiction bookstore <laughs> if you can dig it up. What about the, the Afterlife from Family Circus? That one was pretty good. Wait, was there one? <laughs> where, the, where the little yes. grandpa was up there it's and he like was like a ghost? It's just their grandparents. Oh, yeah, it's was, just them and like not me and like the one, the little ghost that's like, fuck you, that one, that <laughs> one too. That one was the best I one. I thought my mind was still thinking about hell and I was like, did they show hell oh, at Family yeah. Circus? Yeah. All of the grandparents in Family <laughs> Circus in yeah. went to hell. That was hell. Their, their souls are screaming out in yeah. torment. Jeffy's like, mommy, grandpa told me to kill him <laughs> yeah. again because he doesn't want to be in hell. <laughs> my misery oh, no. and you can always see where they go so there's no privacy because their <laughs> footsteps follow everywhere they go yeah oh well, thanks family circus for your really oh. accurate <laughs> depiction of hell and heaven <laughs> so actually that leads quite nicely thank you family circus into my first question for you guys which is do you in your if you get to create the rules of the afterlife mm. would you choose different places for different levels of Ooh. of in quotes goodness of or would you just pick a neutral afterlife as a general umbrella term that everybody goes to or do you think there would be like need to be rules to get into your version i want to combine some elements of is it mormon belief where you get your own planet oh i hope so or jehovah's win it's Mormons. i don't know i, think. I believe in mormon's mm, belief i'm pretty you sure get that's the game planet. mass effect no 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 i want to combine I didn't know that. this oh this yeah interesting. yeah spore they get their own planet but it's going to be like little prince style planets. Yep. Oh, so it's yeah. like you're as manageable oh, size planets. Hell I don't yeah. know the details of the planet you get in under the Mormon faith. Sorry. That's okay. But I you're just stealing know. that basic idea. But I yeah. do think that it would be nice if you had your own space and it was different than just like having a house because mm -hmm. yeah. you can have a house now. Mm -hmm. So if I died I sure and they were can. like, you get a house. I'd be like, I could have had that when I was alive. <laughs> Why didn't you That's tell me? That's not so nice. <laughs> but if they're like, you get a little planet that mm -hmm. you can walk around. And you can in, put a house on it if a, you want. In a couple hours. Sure. Or houses for your friends. I guess Little Princess planet was even small. He could walk around that in like five minutes. Yeah, he was yeah. like as big as it. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bigger than that maybe. Yeah, maybe. Sure. Um, Medium sized prince. So you get a planet. You can use your mind to make stuff on it oh, like yeah. swamp thing did oh yeah like swamp thing did honestly it was one of the things that made me fall in love with swamp thing and i'm not oh, even kidding swamp thing is like my favorite said comic it. i love I swamp actually, thing he confessed i know about swamp thing for sure maybe yeah. you told me one time i probably i mean i i yeah. will take any opportunity to talk about swamp thing and i will very briefly say <laughs> that there is uh, an entire run of comics on swamp thing that is one of my favorite things in all of comics where he gets sent into outer space. Uh, Lex Luthor tried to assassinate him. You see spoiler alert. He doesn't get <laughs> killed, but he sends his swamp soul into outer space and ends up sending several issues swamp of the comic, soul. like bouncing between planets. And one, the first, what he does is ends up on like a completely empty planet, but he can control like the fungus and plants of the planet. And he starts creating his mm, own. Cool. It's like what happens with Dr. Manhattan in Watchmen also written by Alan Moore. Hmm. Hmm, weird. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he psychically creates a whole place, even with like people. Like, I mean, they're facsimiles of people. But I think to alleviate that, like, you could visit each other's planets in the afterlife. Totally, it'd be like Animal Crossing. And if you were bad in life, then you get a shitty planet. Okay, <gasps> it's your oh, planet is as good it, as you are. Sure, <laughs> you were. Yeah, yes. you could, you'd try to plant no, no. flowers, and you would act, you would just be sowing seed upon harsh ground. Yeah, honestly, haven't really cool. thought about like Hell the moral yeah. repercussions in the afterlife. I just want a little planet. I like. This little planet's idea, and I'm just here to hop on that bus and help you with it right now. I want to talk about the bad planets. Okay. <laughs> I want them to be like spiky and uneven no. and like have lots of earthquakes and shit. Sure. Like, yeah. Sure. Like maybe even you wouldn't be able, they would be like super low lit. They'd all be in like the dark corner of the universe. So the, the whatever body, whatever star is lighting all these planets, they don't get as much of it. So you trip a lot and there's like gross stuff that's like hostile to you, maybe. It's kind of dangerous to be there. I think that sounds really exciting. And what I want for this is like, I want a story to be told in this world because hopping across little planets just sounds so nice to me. It sounds cute. It sounds really cute. 
So yeah, I'm into it. I'm totally into that. Okay. Like, yeah. That's great. I feel like I don't know how to, I don't know what my answer would be if someone was like, well, what about Hitler? But I don't know. I don't want it to be about that. <laughs> I just want the afterlife to be a thing mm-hmm. that maybe everybody gets to, I, I feel like okay, there would okay. be very few exceptions. Like maybe, maybe if you were really, really bad, then there's some shoot. Then you, you just can't go. You then just you're just like done you just when die. you die. Sure. But you that like, punished. if you pass like a basic <laughs> threshold that like, 90 percent of humanity does then you get a shot at the afterlife that's what i want my which so it's not that there's a good and a bad place no or a variety of places but rather that it's a it's a yes or no do you get to go to it or you just die yeah yeah, yeah, okay okay i'm kind of interested in that yeah because then at least they're not like tortured forever because like what's really the point of that yeah no i don't think that makes sense at all so that that. doesn't really that doesn't exist in my in my world. No Satan for you. Um, so, okay. My next question is, Ready. what is just a purely good, lovely thing or experience that on, on earth in our lives is not, not easy to come by, but in your afterlife existence would be easy to come by. Mm-hmm. I have one that's really very close to my heart yeah. and has been for a very long time. Yeah. Being perfectly understood oh. by each other like somehow mm, to have language work exactly how you think it's supposed to and they think it's supposed to like maybe you're not using language and you're just communicating via some vibrations or via some like telepathy or something but like that is so completely unattainable mm. even to the best of friends and i want it so bad because it would be so cool that is delicious. Yeah. yeah I like tasty. That. I eat it up. Num num. I think it would be to read a whole book in a single sitting. Oh, that's good too. <laughs> Impossible. Like, it, she didn't, she <laughs> said that it's attainable. That's yeah. true. That's true. So yeah, you just chill, it's read a rarely book. rarely attainable. You can have life, a break for yeah. snacks and a beverage. Okay. Mine, mine is that thing where you, you love a thing like a show or a movie or a song or a book and then you take a person that you love who hasn't experienced it yet and you re-experience it with them so it's like that thing where you're like oh my god i loved this movie Mm -hmm. and then to the your friend or whatever you like know they're gonna love it too and then you get to like be there with them while they experience it so you get to watch it again and you love the thing and you're with someone you love and you are like the Mm -hmm. reason they're getting to experience that great thing. That's the good stuff. Wow. I love that feeling. So it's everybody just like sharing with each other all the time. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, mean, that's, that's cool. not like the, it's not necessarily like the core of what this afterlife is. Yeah. Just an example <laughs> just of one of the cool movies. things that happens. That is cool. I, I thought you were going to say that like one of the worst feelings on earth is, and this is more magical maybe than we're thinking, is that when a show ends and you're like, I wish there was more of that. Mm-hmm. I thought you were going to say that the shows would just go on as long as you wanted them Well, to. I did I did also think a, a similar thing would mm-hmm. be that, like, you know, when you finish a thing and yeah. you're like, oh God, I wish I could watch it again. Like, like re- I wish it was new yourself. to me. So, that, yeah. so yes, the idea that like you could watch it again and it would feel, but it's still, some things are just great to reconsume. I feel like that I learned the hard way that not all of your friends like things as much as you do also Ooh. in college oh. and where it's like where you think yeah. you're like man I'm excited to show my friends this and then they're like why would you show us yeah. that well and that's I'm what like, I'm saying fuck you guys they would yeah. also Go love it in, the woods. Yeah. in this well, no, and that's what's nice yeah. is that because be so nice. it is hard and honestly like it's unreasonable to expect someone like the <laughs> yeah. same thing in the same way to that you like your it. Enthusiasm. But if you yeah. knew that that was how it was going to be, then like, yeah. that'd be really nice. Totally. Yeah. Oh man, that'd yeah. be amazing. Really also like a chocolate fountain. Oh, oh yeah. Right? Maybe that. Chocolate fountain. Can I throw out another one too? Yes, That's like please. theoretically attainable, but not very. Uh, being able to like at least adequately or potentially masterfully play all instruments. Mm-hmm. Uh, like having just the ability to be like, I can hear what it could sound like if someone played something that sounded like this on a guitar, on 
a xylophone, whatever. Sure, sure, you could sure. just do it. If you weren't limited by practice time mm-hmm. anymore, that's a big one for me. That would be beautiful. Very into that. If yeah. you just had the ability and then it was about expression rather than work. Yeah. Would you want to be a one man band? <laughs> Hell yeah. Dave Van Dyke <laughs> tromping around, <laughs> scooping and pooping. I don't After know why that's what universe. I thought of. Um, <sighs> Yeah. I mean, I think that's one of the things I loved about The Good Place is that like they talked about those simple things, like how the, um, the frozen yogurt, like there was like a full cell phone battery flavor. <laughs> Where it's just like, yeah, the little pleasantries that we do understand and experience here, but it's just not as plentiful as it would be in, in this mm. wonderful place. Mm. So, maybe by having it too much, it'd be ruined. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe I don't know. There's only um, one way to know. So, my last question is: Let's say angels are a thing okay. in okay. your afterlife. Okay. And How do you interpret quotes. that? I did air quotes because I don't want you to feel constricted by okay. by a religious traditional. Tradition idea of what an angel is but like if hmm. if you are creating this afterlife and then they're like okay now you have to create an angel what does an angel oh. look like in your so <laughs> okay, i guess that it can be anything it's just mm-hmm. a being that exists in the afterlife that never existed in the before my life mm-hmm. or, right? or it could be right or it could be grandparents for family circus could be minions oh <gasps> minions they could all be minions could mike be you did oh it my End God. The podcast. shut Done. it down they're, they're all minions oh so sexualized <laughs> <laughs> i don't like it it's okay. i i don't like minions and <laughs> i don't like well, where any of this went afterlife. <laughs> yeah it's his he gets You're to right. have as okay. many minions as he okay, wants okay i'm gonna say I was what do you wanna, want to say about let's, minions? Let's talk about th- No, minions are done. We're going to talk about this. Yeah. The idea of angels, angels are present yeah. in the Bible, yeah, in the there. Christian Bible. Mm-hmm. And I've always wondered, like, they're such a fantastical concept. Yeah. Like, they're, they're cool. described as having wings and flashing swords. Yeah. Lots and of like, eyes. Like so many This is eyes. something, as someone who literally like grew up in the Christian church mm-hmm. and actually has a Bible major from a Bible college, yep. like angels are a very weird thing to grapple with They're because surreal. it's like, if God made people and all <laughs> animals, how do angels fit into this? And why did he make them? Yeah. Like, what like is why? that? Because they're literally described. It's not like a metaphorically described, like yeah. some things in the no. Bible. You can be like, well, a metaphor, maybe. No way. But an angel is our visiting people. Straight up intervention. And so it's like, what's uh-huh. going on with angels? Where did they come from? Angels. I literally had a theology professor who had this controversial theory in, oh. He was like a rogue in the Bible department oh. at the college I went to. Got when he was behind people. And he said that like angels were like God's first draft and they like weren't <laughs> like they That's didn't awesome. do what he wanted them to. And so then he made mankind because <laughs> angels were not quite but what angels he was were going just like for. left over. Yeah. And, and still That's more crazy. Power. That's yeah. kind of awesome. I know. Yeah. Well, I think the answers that you seek, Emily lie in a little movie. I like to call <laughs> angels in the outfield. <laughs> I think that's what I want oh, my God. angels to be like. Christopher, Christopher Lloyd. Lloyd. Mostly Jinx. just a Yo, bunch man. of Chris. Him all day. Every He's dressed in every costume you can imagine. And he's there for my pleasure. Jeez. <laughs> you ever see the movie Camp Nowhere? No, is he in that? Yes. Oh as my the, God. As the angel character? I want this to be an experience where I say, you guys have to watch Camp Nowhere with me, and then you both love it as much as 12-year-old Emily oh, loved no. Camp yeah, you, Nowhere. You, can you even love it that much anymore? I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen it let's since I was out. 12. Let's go. Let's watch. Um, but he's there, though. It's so Christopher Lloyd The is concept there. is it's this group of four teenagers who are all mm. getting sent off to Earth they're just going to have bad summers or they're getting sent off to camps they hate or something like that. But they create this fake camp. Mm-hmm. So they tell each of their parents, oh. like one girl's like, I'm going to fat camp. The other girl's like, I'm going to theater camp. And then one guy's like, I'm oh, going to computer they camp. Lie. They make a fake oh. camp. Mm, and Christopher Lloyd, this crazy models. ass drama teacher is like, <laughs> yeah, sure. I'll be the adult in this situation. Oh my God, that rules. So he like has a big cabin and then they all just like all their friends go and hang out at like this camp where they just screw around all summer. <laughs> but then what? the parents all decide they want to visit their of kids. Course, yeah. So that they have to throw this like parent 
parents visiting day for all four camps and Christopher Lloyd's character plays like the camp director of all four camps so what? it's kind of my dream yeah it is kind Except of Except he doesn't exist in he that is the, movie for the parents pleasure that's right. your afterlife that's your camp, camp, with camp nowhere. Lloyd. No. that's the name of your afterlife is camp nowhere it could happen that's a crazy premise. It's, yeah, what? The I heard that movie, but that I had no idea so that was the premise. That's amazing. Yeah, Camp Nowhere is where I want to die. I think it got lumped in with like heavyweights and a couple other yeah. like of those Jonathan no, Taylor Thomas movies. No, Camp Nowhere is way movies. better. And it way wasn't better. Jonathan Taylor Thomas. It was Jonathan Jackson, who was super cute too and had the Jonathan same haircut. Jonathan Jackson? Jonathan Jackson. I loved him. Yep. I don't even know who that is. Yeah, Not no one Joshua else really Jackson. did too. Nope. Jonathan Jackson. Wow. Wow. What did we do? Where did we go? We ran <laughs> so off the rails. I, I think Christopher Lloyd would be my angel. Okay. Uh, and and I think what I what I want angels to do, I think, is an interesting question. Sure. What's their job? Whatever That's you want a good them question. to be. What are deliver they, what messages. Are they, for? they have to deliver messages. Yeah, they're kind of like protect the, you from demons. Okay, so they're but then also too. like de- demons are there because of angels. Of, yeah, I well, guess. It, again, it's not. Remember, Emily said it's not the Christian one. They're just. But, but I'm angels. just running through like the yeah. jobs of angels as we yeah. know them now. Well, is it protect us from bad. They just say bad, bad stuff can't happen. Cause angels are there. Great, love it. So if you're friends with the angels, you're good. I do think that they're, I want them to be autonomous and I want them to be like friends that you can earn, but you, but they're not just automatically there to protect you. Like if you're nice to the angels, you get more like perks and benefits. I just keep thinking of like, not okay not minions the minion yellow <laughs> things but like minions the like yeah. character type like okay. like the oompa loompas sure. or like yeah because like, yeah. if, if angels are better than people then well, we're like not saying that they're better no but i'm just trying to think like what yeah. role do angels play yeah i think they are kind of like minions they're i think like, they're, they're like, like helpers, helpers. Yeah. right i think so helpers is a good my, way of saying that yeah. what i would want was want? is that they are um they take the physical form of animals Ooh, that's good. But they're just like friends who come and like help you with stuff or bring you stuff or send you messages just, or something. But the thing, but it's like, so nice. they are, you get to like interact with, so they have the personality of a human. Christopher Lloyd specifically. So yes, Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> so like I would get to like one day there'd be a knock on my door in the afterlife <sighs> and I answer and it would just be like a dolphin, <laughs> like just a dolphin. Just, hey. How did it knock? It's with its... It carries a block of wood with it everywhere. (laughs) And then then I would be like, hello. And the dolphin would speak to me in English. Wow. And then the next day it would be like a red squirrel. And then oh, the day after different. that, it would be, yeah, they're like all the, all the different huh. angels it's, are like, it's not quite like golden compass then. No, it's not. Cause they're like not tied to a person, but they're but just, that's, that's fun. Yeah. Do you think they'd all have specialties? Like if you were doing a construction project that day, like a badger would come to help you. Or if you were like having trouble with your math homework in heaven <laughs> that, uh, you know, <laughs> What the, that thing you have to do, uh, that, like a smart one, like an owl, an would owl, come, yeah, a classic, say, yeah, classic owl would come and help um, you with the homework. Like, do you think they'd have little specialties? I don't know, like that? Uh, maybe, but then sometimes I bet they'd surprise you. Yeah, because you can't box them in. Mm-mm. Not all owls. Mm-mm. Remember in the movie Van Helsing when no. Dracula had those little helpers? Do you mean the movie starring Hugh Jackman, Van Helsing? Yeah. Oh. What a movie! Because <laughs> I just had to take a minute. Dracula to in that, that movie has a big old movie. lab, and he has a bunch of little helper creatures, and they're like they're like evil Oompa Loompas, and that's what oh, I want angels okay. to be. You want them to be evil? <laughs> I basically just want angels to be demons. <laughs> you can't. I mean, It'd yeah, it's your afterlife, were, man. Cool. They just seem like they have more fun. Yeah, demons have more fun. They do. <laughs> they do have more fun. <laughs> Why yeah. should the devil have all the good music? <gasps> yeah. Is all I want to say. God, if I can pick what if demons will be real like you very clearly want them to be sure like, i want them to be gizmo from Gremlins. Yeah. all of them just having a blast There's some cute ones just cute little guys and then a couple scary like, ones like just hot for stuff fun. hot stuff yeah the you little cute little stuff. cupid but you know hot stuff no okay He's so cute there's casper the yeah. friendly ghost mm-hmm. there's wendy the good little witch mm-hmm. and there's hot stuff the devil <laughs> <laughs> Satan Honestly, himself. Yeah, it's I'm not him. kidding. Like it's, it's a him, little demon but he's boy. He's cute and he has a butt. Like I'm unclear on exactly how he's related to the other pantheon of hell. No, but he is like cute, scary. <laughs> but he's thing. a cute like, little because it's Casper and devil. And, and, yeah, totally. Like I think has less stuff has less permeated the the culture now yeah. because 
people are worried about the devil. A lot of people have hot stuff tattoos. You've probably seen him before. If we uh, show you a picture afterwards, oh, they'll yeah. be like hot stuff. No, I know. Tattoos. I know exactly what we're yeah, talking about. I've I can seen see it. Multiple people. It's like, well, that's your that type, David. My it's type like, is if you have a hot stuff tattoo. If we were playing. No, it's if, like, we it's playing. like the little devil boy version of Casper. It's like in that same. Yeah, yep. Exactly. Drawing yeah, art yeah, style. Yeah, kind of chunky. Yeah. 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 Cute. Sassy little butt. Sassy little butt. <laughs> SLB. I think that about sums it that up. That really does sum it up. Hot stuff. Um, hot stuff. I love that his name's hot name stuff. Because the other stuff. ones are named things. Yeah, that, Casper, like, people have Wendy. Those are also names. names. Normal names. Then he's and just then this hot one's stuff. hot stuff. <laughs> Casper isn't spooky stuff, and Wendy yeah. isn't like girl yeah, stuff. Yeah, magic Come stuff. Come on, magic stuff is a great name. Oh, thanks okay, for listening. Well, yeah, thank you for listening. Thanks for talking about that stuff, guys. I just wanted to hash it out with you. Yeah, thank you so much. We really much. hashed it out. There's there's one more segment. Mm-hmm. It's called real? No Questions Asked. Mm. I'm yes. going to ask you guys a question. You have to answer it and then you have to shut your damn mouth. <laughs> I love it when you do it because it's so aggressive. <laughs> okay. Would you rather go on a road trip with Hot Stuff or Christopher Lloyd? Hot Stuff. To Hot Stuff. Christopher Lloyd. Okay, bye. Bye. I'm watching, watching. Music by Jaden James and the Hunger. Logo by Christian Hagen. Edited by David Gutchy. If you want more of our hypothetical content, join our Facebook group or like our posts on Twitter or Instagram or give us some stars and a review on iTunes or wherever the heck you get your podcasts. Have I mentioned the short story I wrote about that? No. It was like the idea that you'd want to be able to watch something again fresh. And so it was a device that like erased your mind, but specifically just the memory of that thing. Ah, Eternal sunshine. But then like the people were erasing it. And right when they were erasing their memories to watch something again, they like witnessed a murder outside their home. (laughs) But then like the guy saw. And so the script ended with, with the guy like coming over to their house to presumably murder them. Oh, because I guess because the rear window is good. Man, they should have been watching Rear Window. I guess because Rear though. Window was good. And <laughs> Go I wanted edit to make it. Go edit like it. A, this movie's called Front Window. <laughs>